Hey there, I am here just doing a quick video about what looks normal for a kombucha scoby. So I get lots of questions about people saying like, is my scoby dead or is this normal or is this mold? Um, so all really good questions and super normal questions to ask, like especially when you first start fermenting, there's a lot of anxiety about is this mold, is this bad for me? I'm watching this thing grow on my counter and like, um, it's this whole new experience, right? Like growing something indoors made out of bacteria and yeast um, on purpose. Um, but actually we do it all the time in cooking. Um, so for kombucha, um, I just wanted to show you because I have a couple examples of, of healthy scobies here. Um, and sometimes they can look really different from each other. So there's not just one way that a healthy scoby can look. But um, I just wanted to show you some signs of fermentation. So I've got two batches here. So I'm going to move the camera and show you. So this is a really big batch. You can actually see better, I guess, if I tip up the screen like that. Big batch and little batch. So my little batch is four liters, which is actually pretty big, just for scale. And then I've got this one, which holds uh, 16 liters. Um, and I've got a really this beautiful big jar for years that I've been packing around. And um, so to do my kombucha class, I brew big batches. So what's cool is that a scoby will always grow to the size of its container. So you can see here, I'm gonna start from below. So what you're looking at here is this crazy form. Um, the scoby is the, the culture of yeast and bacteria that ferments the tea and sugar. And so you're gonna see, you see some strands, kind of some ghosty looking brown strands that come kind of hanging down off the scoby. Um, this is totally normal and those strands are just part of the yeast and bacteria. You can drink them, they won't make you sick or anything like that. You can also filter them out if you don't like them. I think they're good for your gut so I don't filter them out. Um, you, it's also the same stuff like when you get apple cider vinegar that's not pasteurized, it's the same strands that you're going to see there. Those are um, from a vinegar mother instead of a kombucha mother, but similar idea. So keep the strands in if you have them. If you don't see them, it's not a bad sign. It just happens sometimes that there's more. Um, you're also seeing that I have more than one scoby in here. This is a really big batch. So I've got about three or so um, scobies and some of them were not beautifully formed. Um, some of them were, I guess you can move around this side too. Some of them were, had like a, that one had a little hole in it and that's totally fine. So I put a few scobies in that one. And what happened, I'll just show you under the cap here, is it formed this beautiful big white scoby. So, um, let's see if I can get my camera all the way inside there. There we go. See, what I'm looking at is a fairly even formation of uh, whitish, like it's almost clear, but it's starting to turn white. So that is the new mother forming. Um, and that's totally normal and fine. It started out as almost a clear, uh, looked like cling film on top layer and then it got uh, a little bit more developed this one still is only like maybe a centimeter thick and that's fine so my next scoby or sorry for my next batch what i'm going to do here is just to take it off i just move it aside with a wood spoon and i'll take that whole big scoby out of there and the smaller ones underneath, and you can use either the old one or the new one for brewing. So it doesn't really matter, just use one or the other or both, and they're genetically the same, so it doesn't matter. They have the same potency as each other, the older one and the newer one. Um, another example that I want to show you here is this one. It's brewed with hibiscus tea instead of black tea. Um, and this one has some nice bubbles forming at the top. So just be sure when you're checking if it's moldy, um, by the way, I've I've only had mold once and that was because I tried to create a moldy scoby just to see if I could. Um, when it's moldy, it's pretty obvious, but this one is uh, just bubbly. So let's see if I can focus the screen there. Um, so some bubbles on top and that's fine. This one's got something interesting happening inside. Check it out. It actually blew a bubble. So this here, oh, there I just deflated the bubble. Um, Sometimes you'll see them blow little kombucha bubbles, um, and that's great too. Um, uh, so, because fermentation um, 
creates carbon dioxide, right? So the, the sugars are being fermented um, and it creates carbon dioxide. So we're going to get bubbles and sometimes the carbon dioxide gets trapped under the SCOBY and then it makes like a little bubble. If I see that happening, I usually just kind of move it aside and pop it with my finger. Um, so both of these are done and I can tell because it tastes nice and sour to me and I can taste just a little bit of effervescence. Um, and that's it. I just wanted to let you know what it looks like before I go ahead and bottle it. A um, few of you know that I'm doing a class at Homestead Junction. I think it's actually sold out, but I'll keep you in touch with when the next kombucha classes are happening or just go to the upcoming events tab on my website at rootednutrition.ca. I hope to see you at a live event and yeah, comment below if you have questions about your SCOBY. Um, I am getting so many emails about them. I'm thinking about starting a gallery of healthy and not healthy SCOBYs on my website. Um, so thumbs up if you think that's a really good idea and would be helpful for you. Uh, yeah, so I hope that was helpful.